Welcome to this first of two lectures on the cranial nerves. This particular video, or these next two videos, will build upon the other two videos that Michael has created. So Michael has done a video on the mnemonics of the cranial nerves and a brief overview of the cranial nerves. However, this, these next two videos will look more in depth of the 12 cranial nerves, looking at where they originate, what uh, structures they innovate, and their main courses. The first thing I just want you to be aware of is the first two cranial nerves aren't real cranial nerves. They're actually more extensions of the central nervous system. So just be aware of that um, when you are studying this. So let's start with this one here. So this is cranial nerve number one. So number one. So what I would like you to know as a learn outcomes for these, these two videos is know the nerves, know what they innovate, know their general course, okay, and know where they and know where they originate. So the first one, and if whether they're whether they're considered a sensory, a motor, or a mixed nerve. So the first one is the olfactory nerve. Okay, so number one, cranial nerve number one, olfactory, and it is what we call a special sensory nerve. Okay, so it's picking up sensation of the nose. So in your nose. So coming down here, so this is a schematic drawing of the olf olfactory nerve with a bulb, the tract, the filaments going through this block, which is the cribriform plate. So sitting in the superior aspect of your nose, you have the olfactory epithelium. So this is where it starts. So it starts from the olfactory epithelium. Okay. So in the superior conchi, in the medial septum, and just on the inferior aspect of the cribriform plate is where these olfactory epithelial cells are, which are more specifically bipolar cells. Here they pick up a sense of chemical sense of um, sensation, and they will cause an electrical activity to go through. So we've got approximately 20 filaments that go through the olfactory, so it goes through the cribriform plate, so the ethnoid bone, and go up, and then will synapse in the olfactory bulb. Here they synapse, okay, and then we have a second order neuron going through like so. So this is what we call the olfactory bulb, okay, and then we have another synapse, so we have a synapse in the bulb, okay, and then the secondary order will carry information down here, which is the tract, and the tract on either side, so you have a, obviously a left nose or a left nostril and a right nostril, so you're going to have two of these on either side, one on the left, one on the right, and this is going to take it to the cortex. And so where does it go to? It goes to the olfactory, olfactory cortex. And that's essentially the first cranial nerve. So special sensory nerve starts in the olfactory epithelium of the nose, superior conchi, medial septum, inferior part of the cribriform plate, 20 little nerve rootlets come through, synapse in the olfactory bulb, and then they send a second order neuron down the olfactory tract into the cortex where they synapse, and then you perceive the type of smell. So that's cranial nerve number one. Cranial nerve number two. This is the optic nerve, okay, and this is also a special sensory nerve. Okay, where does it start? It starts, so its origin is the retina. So in your retina, so let's get your bearings. So this is like a cross-sectional cut through the head at the eye level. So you've cut through like this. You've cut through the eye and the old fact, the optic nerve and the chiasm, etc. And you can see the nose there. Okay, so this is the midline, this is the eyeballs that are being cut. And so sitting in there are special bipolar cells that pick up sensory information of light. So these bipolar cells then synapse with ganglionic cells in the retina and these together collectively come together into the optic disc which then transmits information through collectively a right and a left optic nerve 
Now, what this is, what's the red and blue indicating? Well, it's picking up different information. So on the red side here, which is the medial or nose side, it's this red area is picking up information which is going to go on the red and this blue is going to pick up information on that side of the retina. Just an important point here is even though this is picking up information on the lateral part of the eyeball on the left side, it's actually getting information from the medial. So vision is going to come in from this side, go across and hit that part of the eyeball. Whereas this side is coming from the lateral and coming in like this. Now together they're going to come and join one optic nerve. So this is going to be the left optic nerve. This is going to be the right. They go through. This is a hole in your skull right here. This is the optic canal. It goes through the nerve where they, these two nerves come together and meet. So this, is, this area here is called the optic chiasm. Chiasma. And so this red part is going to cross to the other side. This blue part is going to cross to this side. So this information of the retina on the left hand side will actually go across to the right. Whereas this part on the right hand side will cross to go onto the left. So it's very important that you, now you know that the optic tract, which is here, the tract, is now got information from the, both the right eye and the left eye and same with this side as well. So that's an important point because that when you have visual defects you need to know where the defect is and by understanding what the patient is presenting with as the defect you can then know if it's a tract problem, a chiasm problem or optic nerve problem or maybe a problem in the eye itself. So it's very important to know. Now as it continues on, it will then synapse at the end in three parts. So one will go here, one here, and one to the back, and same on both sides. So there's three actual synapses or reflexes. Number one is in the midbrain, okay, and this is called the tectum. Number two is the back of the midbrain, okay, which is the superior colliculus. And number three is the lateral geniculate. Body. And so what they do, the tectum brings light. So light information to the tectum is going to be for pupil reflex. So it's going to quickly synapse with an area in the midbrain, which will co cover in a sec, which is going to be here which is the edinger westphal which is going to cause pupil constriction. Number two goes to the superior colliculus, which helps with auditory visual reflexes. And number three, the lateral geniculate body on either side, is going to then send information to the um, occipital lobe, which is the primary um, visual centre and make sense of the information that has come in. So that's the cranial nerve number two special sensory and all that information that we've gone through you need to know. Moving on to cranial nerve number three. So CN3. Oh, just one second. It ends in those three areas. So we've had from two, so start, finish, start, finish. Okay, now we move on to cranial nerve number three. So cranial nerve number three is actually by its name the ocular motor, so that should tell you what it's going to do it's going to be motor, okay? So cranial nerve three, ocular motor, motor. All right, so where does it start? It starts from, or I'll say start. Start midbrain. All right, so this has, this ocular motor actually has three main components to it, but I'll start with the black color. So in the midbrain, at the level around the superior colliculus, we have special motor fibres which are called general somatic efferent. Now these has, this, this kind of stuff has been covered in the brainstem nuclei lecture, so if you haven't covered that, have a look at that and this will make more sense with these terms. So general somatic efferent, which is skeletal muscle, this is taking information from the midbrain. It's coming along like so, and it goes into your skull. 
and enters an area called the cavernous sinus. So this area that I've driven, that I've drawn here, is the cavernous, the cavernous sinus, cavernous sinus. Very important structure. Sits on either side of the cella turcica in the brain, in the skull, should I say? So it enters into like that, very close to a blood vessel that's coming up. The blood vessel's in the internal carotid vessel, and what that will drop, well, it comes up into the skull and it brings sympathetic fibres with it. So that's that green line here. So it brings a sympathetic nerve in with it, and this sympathetic nerve joins the um, the black which is the somatic nerve, and it's going to enter the cavernous sinus together. And as we come out the other side of the cavernous sinus, we go through a hole in the skull, like so, which is called the superior orbital fissure. So we go through that hole, and as we've gone through, we separate into two branches. We have a superior branch and an inferior branch. The superior branch with the, soma the somatic or the, the main skeletal motor is going to go to two branches, okay, two branches in the superior. We have one which is the going to the muscle called the levata palpura superioris, okay, and the other one is the superior rectus, okay. Now it's important to know the sympathetic will go also to the levata palpa superioris, but it's going to take visceral, it's going to innovate visceral fibres. So the levata palpa superioris is the muscle that brings your eyelid up. So that's important to lift, lift your eyelid up. The superior rectus is going to be for your eye muscles and that causes you to look up. That's important to know because when you look up, you want the eyelid to go with it. Okay, so as you look up, the eyelid will lift. That works together. It's also important to know that the sympathetic is innovating this muscle for the eyelid and sometimes people who have problems with the sympathetic, so they've got a deficit in the sympathetic, can cause a drooping of the eyelid which is called ptosis. The other, the inferior branch, so this is the inferior branch, this is the superior branch, is going to go down and innovate three extraocular muscles. The first one is the medial rectus, the second one is the inferior rectus, and the third one is the inferior oblique. The middle rectus is going to cause your eyes to look inwards, the inferior rectus is looking, your eyes looking down, the inferior oblique does kind of three things. It causes your eye to rotate outwards, it causes you to look up, and it causes you to look out. So it kind of what it will do on its own is look up and out. Okay. However, if you wanted to test it, you get the patient to look, so to go cross-eyed, so look at their at a pen or something or your finger, right close, so both eyes are looked in, and get them to look up. If they can do that, the inferior oblique is working. So that is the main of the ocular motor, but there is a, a second aspect to it, and this is another nuclei in the midbrain and this is called the special visceral efferent which is from the pharyngeal arches okay sorry not the pharyngeal arches i apologize it's going to bring um, parasympathetic so it's going to be general visceral efferent okay so this is bringing parasympathetic nerve into the eye so it's going to be carrying with the ocular motor through the cavernous sinus through the superior orbital bleak, orbital fissure, where it goes down the inferior branches and then synapses at the ciliary ganglion. Here, so this is carrying preganglionic parasympathetic fibres and then the postganglionic is going to go to the eye, sphincter and cause constriction of the pupil. Okay? So that's important to know because if you shine light into the eye, which we saw in the optic nerve, it's going to cause the Edinger westphal nucleus to then cause ultimately pupil constriction. Why that's important? Well sometimes as it's coming into the cavernous sinus, if you've got lots of pressure in your brain, such as if you've got a bleed or you've had an injury, it's going to push on that nerve, the ocular motor nerve, and it's going to stop this uh, particular fibres working and when you shine light into the person's eye, the patient's eye, they don't constrict anymore, they stay dilated. 
which could be called a blown, a blown nuclear, a blown pupil. So the end of it, of the ocular motor, is going to be the eye muscles, extra ocular eye muscles, and ciliary ganglion. So the only difference is the blue and the green are going to take visceral fibers, so smooth muscle, whereas the black is skeletal muscles. And then finally, we've got cranial nerve, well, on this board so far, we've got cranial nerve number four, which is going to be called the trochlea. This particular um, nerve is completely motor. It starts in the midbrain. So it's going to come out of the midbrain, go across, come in through the posterior and middle cranial fossas, and then enter, like we saw here, into the cavernous sinus. Again, very high. And then it's going to enter through the superior orbital fissure, like we saw here. Same, same hole in the skull. Exits the skull and goes to the superior oblique. Superior oblique is another extraocular muscle, but instead of like the inferior oblique, it does the opposite. So it's going to look down and in. Okay, if you want to test that one, you get a person to go cross-eyed again and you look down. So that's the superior orbital oblique. So where does that nerve end? It uh, ends at the superior oblique. Okay, so that's cranial nerve one, two, three, four. Now I'll get rid of this and we'll go on to five and six. So now we're going to move on to number, cranial nerve number five. So this is cranial nerve five. Okay, now cranial nerve number five is called trigeminal, which means three twins. Okay, so that's the, what the actual nerve means. It's the largest cranial nerve in your body and it's actually got both motor and sensory. So it's a mixed nerve. So it's the first mixed nerve that we've come across so far. Now, in terms of what it does, the sensory is quite large and we've got a, a fairly small motor branch. Now, the trigeminal has three major branches, V1, V2, V3. I'll go through all these in a second, so don't get too confused at this point in time. V1 is called the ophthalmic branch. V2 is the maxillary branch. V3 is the mandibular branch. So let's start with sensory. So remember, sensory is going from the out and coming in. So I've drawn this in black. Now the first thing to be aware of with the sensory, its nucleus, so where it actually ends, goes along the whole length of the brainstem. So again, going back to the brainstem nuclei lecture, this is a nuclei that stretches the whole length of the brainstem. So in the medulla, the pons and the midbrain. All the sensory information coming from your head, your neck, your face, your uh, pharynx is going to go into that big long nucleus. So this is it here, like so. The, the nuclei, so the actual cell bodies of the nerves, sensory nerves, sits in an area, so this is all like the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal cord, uh, or the spinal nerves, this has got its own little one which is called the trigeminal ganglion. Now this is located in the cavernous sinus. So the cavernous sinus sits around the three right here, like so. That's the cavernous sinus, like so. Now the three major branches, so that's the trigeminal ganglion, and from the ganglion going out distally, we've got three branches. One, two, three. V1, which is the top branch, or the superior branch, so that's called V1, will then go through another foramen, so another hole here called the superior orbital fissure. Okay, so that's the first branch, V1. That will then go through and branch off into three major branches. Okay, these branches are the frontal, the lacrimal, and the nasociliary. What they do really quickly, the frontal, remember this is only sensory, so it's bringing information from that part of your head, so the forehead and kind of the middle part of your inner eye there, so in that area there. So that's going to be from the frontal branches. The lacrimal branches, as you can probably guess, is going to bring in 
uh, it's, it's going to have information going from the outer part of your eye, so the lateral part of your eye, sensory, in terms of sensory, but it's also going to have a, a special nerve in there that's going to go to the lacrimal duct to help you form tears. So there's going to be a branch in there which is actually coming from another branch down here, but I'll leave it at that point. So that's the lacrimal. And then finally the nasociliary. The nasociliary by its name should tell you it's going to um, bring sensory information from the, the nose, the inside of the nose, the inside of the dura of your um, middle cranial um, foramen and also come down into your nose. So it's going to bring information outside nose and inside nose sensory. Okay. It's also going to have another nerve with it that's going to go to the ciliary ganglion which we saw that's going to help you pupil constrict. So these are just hijacking nerves, okay? So remember these nerves themselves are, ciliary, are sensory nerves, but they will have other nerves that jump on board with them to get a free ride, so to speak. So the, the ciliary part of the nasociliary is actually going to go and help to cause a lacrimation, but that actually comes from uh, the facial nerve. Now we move into V2. So coming down here like this, this is called V2. Okay, so this is going to go through a hole in your skull called foramen rotundum because it's round. Here it comes through and branches off into three major branches as well. We've got one which is zygomatic. Number two, the inferior infraorbital. And number three is palatine. Now it's important to know this palatine branches actually have a whole lot of other branches to it, but for the sake of time I just will call it a palatine branch. The zygomatic sensory is going to take information kind of in that part of your temporal skin, the temporal area of your, of your head, but it's also going to carry um, a nerve with it which is going to go up to the lacrimal for lacrimation. So that's going to bring a facial nerve along with it so this is just a, again another hitchhiker along with it to carry it up to this nerve to then cause you to form tears. Okay, the infraorbital nerve is going to go to all the top kind of um, teeth, the hard palate, all that kind of up area, sensory. But it's also going to have another nerve with it and that's going to help you to form some saliva on the top area of your mouth. And then finally the palatine, this is going to go to all the pharyngeal, the nasopharynx all the sensory on the back of your throat but it's also going to have a bit of green there which is taking so that's going to be important for taste okay so that's going to take taste back from the hard palate back to the um, midbrain and so forth to make sense of it okay so that's v3 okay sorry v2 finally v3 this is the mandibular so that was maxillary, V3 is maxillary. Finally, mandibular, or V3, has kind of two sections to it. It has a sensory section and it has a motor section. So the motor is in blue. This is coming from um, the pons. So the pons is the motor and it's going to come down in V3 only. So it's only V3 that has a motor component. The other two up here are purely sensory. So the motor, what it will give, it will give branches, okay, so this is going to be the first pharyngeal arch, so this is going to be first pharyngeal arch, so this is special visceral efferent. So one branch is going to be muscles of mastication, so this is going to innervate temporalis buccinator, sorry, masseter and the two pterygoids, okay, that's those muscles. It's also going to go to the tensor tympanae, which is going to tense a little muscle in your middle ear, and it's going to go to a tensor palatine, which is going to kind of help with the station tube. It's going to go also to the anterior belly of digastric muscle, and it's also going to go to mylohyoid which is the base of the tongue. So these are all the muscles that are coming, that are going to be innovated from that motor branch. In terms of the, the couple of sensory of importance, you've got 
lingual nerve and you've got inferior infra alveolar. So the inferior alveolar is going to go through a foramen which comes out in your chin so it's going to innervate all your bottom teeth and give you sensation to the front part of your jaw whereas the lingual is going to go to more the palate okay innervate the palate and it's going to take with it taste backwards and salivation forwards and so that's really again those two nerves are going to be hijacking nerves which jump on with it and so we've got salivation that way taste back that way but the nerve proper for the trigeminal is actually going to just take normal sensation to that part the palate and so forth whereas this one's the bottom teeth and the lower jaw and then we saw the muscle and so forth. So that's cranial nerve number five. It's mixed. It starts, depends which way you go. So if sensory is this way, motor is that way, but let's say it starts in um, brainstem and it's going to end, or if it's motor, it's going to be the muscles of mastication mostly and a few of the other ones. And then it's going to end all so at least the v, V1, which is ophthalmic, is going to be that part sensory. V2 is going to be that part and V3 is that part. And then finally, or at least for this video, we're going to have cranial nerve number six, which is abducens. This is purely motor. Okay. This nerve starts in the pons. So moving down the lower pons where it comes out, it's going to come out at the front and go all the way towards the middle cranial fossa where it then enters the cavernous sinus like we've seen with the others. Then it goes through the cavernous sinus and goes through a foramen called the superior orbital fissure, comes through that, goes with all the other nerves of the eye, so the, such as the ocular motor, such as the trochlea, and then it's going to innervate with the lateral rectus muscle. And the lateral rectus muscle causes the eyes to look out and that's called abduction. This is why it's called the abducens nerve because it abducts the eye. So this nerve, just to reiterate, it starts at the lower pons and ends at the lateral rectus muscle where it innervates that extraocular muscle. And that's, that's the abducens nerve. So this is the first six cranial nerves. In the next lecture, we'll move on to seven to 12.